I bring you grace, mercy, and peace, all of which are good gifts from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Of all our senses, smell is the one I think about the least. We live in a culture of images and sounds. We talk about what we see and we hear, but not about smells. When we do talk about smells, we're talking about opinions, like taste. Smell is largely a personal preference. Whether you like this perfume or that cologne is not a moral choice, but a matter of taste. But there are some smells that are offensive, decaying, dead things, stink. The smell of death is bad, evoking a revulsion and nausea that is natural rather than learned, a sense, of, a sense that death and decay are not good. But what is apparent to most is not always perceived by all. Some have lost their sense of smell and even taste, sometimes a little, sometimes a lot, due to COVID. Is this meat still good? Does that bro broccoli smell all right to you? Their noses can't figure it out. They need the nose of another. Lazarus stank. Dead people stink. There was no disagreement about that. Martha warned Jesus about it. He's a four-dayer, the text says, four days dead. It's not going to be pleasant, and no one wants to experience that smell. He would have been anointed for burial, as was the custom, but even the perfumes and grave clothes could not overcome the repulsive stink of death. The perfumes only masked partially its horrible smell. But Jesus was undeterred by the dead man's smell, nor did he shrink back from the apparent permanence of death. He subjected himself to the smell. He called out to the dead man as if he could hear, and he did. And the dead man came rising from, as if from sleep, wearing his grave clothes as if pajamas. Give him a change of clothes, Jesus said, and let him go free. And so death passed over the dead man, and the lamb stood at his door of his grave, prepared to shed his blood to set him free, to set you free. And one day Jesus will stand at your grave and mine and call our names, come out, and you will, fresh and clean, with the smell of life, as if never subject to death and decay, without even a whiff of death about you, and more alive than ever before. The grave clothes set aside, you will be called to a banquet that does not end, to the Lamb's high feast, to joy and gladness, to praise and thanksgiving without decay. Now Lazarus, once dead but now alive, lies not in the grave but reclines at table with Jesus. He eats and drinks as is the custom of men. But this is not just another supper nor even a sacred festal gathering as important as they were. The meal celebrated Raz Lazarus' resurrection. He was dead, but now lives. Death had passed over him, even as Jews got ready for the Passover. Lazarus is bathed and clean, fresh clothes and living body. The smell of fresh bread and aromatic wine fill the air. Shouts of laughter instead of cries of lament. Instead of a funeral meal, a resurrection banquet. The resurrected life of Lazarus and the presence of the life of men, the resurrection of the dead, the, the resurrection of the life, Jesus, Savior, and friend. Sin stinks. It's a sign of spiritual decay. It brings death. We know this. We believe this in general. But sometimes we struggle to accept this reality for our own sins, for our own specific sins. Perhaps we've lost a sensitivity to the stench. Like a COVID side effect, part of the effect of sin in our lives is a dulling of our sense of it. We may begin to believe if we can't smell it, it's not a problem. We get used to the loss of smell. Sin is deceitful, and the tempter twists the truth. Now more than ever, we're tempted to use our bodies in ways that sin against both our bodies and against God. Sexual desire and expression are pleasurable. Therefore, do what is natural to you, Satan says. Did not God create you this way? But what God designed for good, 
male and female and heterosexual marriage as the only God-pleasing context for sexual expression is a source of infinite distortions and corruptions. What God clearly designates as evil is now celebrated as good. And what God regards as good is regularly treated as evil. Not every desire we have is good. God would not have you treat your girlfriend or boyfriend as if already your spouse. That's a way that seems right to some, but results in death, not to mention a lot of collateral damage in the meantime. We may not sense that the illegitimate use of our bodies is offensive to God, but we're called to die to desires to use our bodies contrary to God's will and design. We're called to honor God with our bodies and with what we teach about the body. The triune God has created your body. He has redeemed it with the blood of his son, sanctifies it by his spirit and promises its glorious resurrection. The voice of Jesus continues to call to us. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There is another who senses our sin, whose nose is filled with the stench of it, but who braves the stench and calls us out of its grasp, its decaying, death-dealing deception. He doesn't avoid us. He doesn't give us up for dead. He doesn't exclude us from forgiveness for our weakness or hidden sins. He came for the sick to seek and to save the lost and to call wandering Christians back to the fold. He calls us through the preacher and the teacher, through the one who speaks his word. Listen to him. Listen to him through them. Though you can't smell danger, though you can't smell sin, trust that others can and that they've been sent here for you, to you, for such a time as this. The banqueters were celebrating the resurrection of Lazarus. It was a meal to rejoice in life. They reached out for the good things that were at hand, the fragrant foods and drinks. And when they had set aside desire for food and drink, the house was filled with another smell. While Martha was serving the guests bread and wine, Mary too would serve. While the meal wasn't cheap, Mary brought forth the most fragrant and expensive offering of all, a perfume worth a year's wages, and she poured it out on the feet of Jesus. Why this act? Did Jesus need a little freshening up? The Lord Jesus explains the meaning of the act in our text. Mary anointed Jesus for burial. In the midst of a celebration of life, there was the reminder of an impending death. Not the death of Lazarus, but the death of Jesus that of the life-giving, resurrection and the life. Believe in me and you will never die, Jesus. The anointing of Lazarus, like that of any dead man, was meant to cover up the scent of death. But the anointing of Jesus still alive was the fragrant smell of a living man. This was the man whose death would bring life for all mankind. Jesus himself would offer himself to the Father in our place. His death was a scent well-pleasing to God, the atonement for all our sins, the means of our reconciliation with the Father, the sacrifice to end all sacrifices, the Passover lamb to mark our hearts and deliver our bodies from eternal death. Here was the lamb of God marked out, chosen from eternity, banqueting in the house of his friends, celebrating the resurrection of Lazarus, even as he prepared for the death that made that resurrection to life possible. This lamb would be slain, but behold, He would live forever. And you too, subject to death as you are because of sin, have been anointed for death. You have been given death to sin through your baptism in Jesus. You've been covered with the scent of Christ before God. And the scent of Christ's righteousness, yours through faith, fills the halls of heaven where the Lamb's banquet is being prepared and wafts here and there on earth wherever you go. Your sin has been washed away. The filthy rags of your dead works unloosed and Christ's righteousness and newness and life have been given to you. And through you, our Lord holds out the words of eternal life, the scent of Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Through your patience and forgiveness, 
The scent of life fills the spaces around you. Through your confession of Christ and his teachings, the scent of this anointing draws attention, an uncommon scent in this world, causing others to consider the reason for your hope. And some will be drawn to this scent and will live. And that will make all the difference. For they will join you at the banquet. It will be no mere local temporary feast at an immense banquet, the celebration of the resurrection and the life the Lamb's high feast with myriads from east and west, from north and south, and it will never end. In the name of Jesus, amen. We rise for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of another day to serve you and worship you. Please bless us and be with us in the many tasks of the day and give us strength and energy and health for all we are called to do. In our special prayers today, we include petitions for Professor Don Corte, who is undergoing a heart procedure today. Heavenly Father, for this, your servant and all who look to you for healing, we pray for wisdom and skill for doctors and all who attend to them for healing according to your gracious will, and for strength and comfort in your love and presence in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for a friend of student Kaylee McCarty, who is undergoing a difficult time. Gracious Father, heal this friend. Grant this friend an abundance of the awareness of your mercy. Lift them up in your love and surround them with others to support and help. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for many suffering loss from tornadoes throughout the country. Gracious Father, we pray that those who have suffered loss can be comforted, the rescue workers and any in harm's way are kept safe, and that all could be comforted in your love and presence in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive the blessing of our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.